Hey friends and welcome to the channel. I'm Ken Smith. I'm sitting on the back end of my 1930 Model A chassis Huckster build and I'm actually finishing up a three-part series that I started two years ago and that had to do with shocks, modern shocks and kingpins and brakes all the way around on a Model A and I got the first two done, decided to hold off on the rear brakes and the rear shocks, and I'm kind of glad I did because, quite honestly, um, you're going to see some better video showing the shocks without a body on, and I think that might really help you make a decision. So part three of that, but this is also the Huckster build, and so ironically it falls part three on that as well. So. I'm going to show you a high level overview of what we did with the rear brakes. It's really not a whole lot. And I'm going to show you about the shocks and what I've discovered, and I think it might be very helpful for you. So let's get at it. So, like the front brakes, I went ahead and uh, these I actually picked up at a swap meet for 10 bucks for a, a pair of them. So, uh, they're the same type of lining that I put on the front. So I thought, hey, why not? I went over to our local clutch place, brought over the uh, emergency brake band, and we uh, went ahead and had them reline that. I've got the whole assembly together. Uh, you know, up here it goes together just like the front brake, so there's no need in being redundant. Back here there's an adjusting wedge, and... Uh, Again, you know, the rear rollers right on that adjusting ledge or wedge. And so, <clears throat> otherwise, they pretty much go on the same. This is uh, the key for the drum. This vehicle had a shim on it, so we're going to go ahead and keep a shim on it. And let's talk about the rear shocks for a moment. So, as I mentioned in an earlier video, we were installing Ken Davis shocks. And I knew that I had to disassemble the rear brakes in order to mount this bracket. Okay, this is a correction to what I just got done saying. You do not have to disassemble all of the rear brakes in order to install the Ken Davis shocks. If you're only going to install the Ken Davis shocks, I want to make a little bit of a correction there. My suggestion would be to disconnect the parking brake rod on the back side of the backing plate so that the lever will move a little bit freely and then remove the parking brake band off of the backing plate and just leave everything connected. You should be able to maneuver that out of the way long enough to be able to get to the castle nuts and the cotter pins and remove those. Uh, there's only two that you have to take out and then you should be able to slide that uh, Ken Davis lower shock perch mount and the replacement bolts that he provides for you. So sorry about that information. Um, I've gone ahead, obviously, and I, I held off from doing it last year. But since we did the brakes, I went ahead and did it uh, just now. One of the things that I want to point out is the, sh the, sh the top of the shock mounts right here where the bumper would be. Now, I can tell you this, and if I give you kind of a, a perspective, get this out of the way, you can see how much higher this shock, the top of the shock, rides over the top of the frame. And on the four-door, you know, there's this, this is all wood that mounts right here. So there's a whole lot of carving out to get this bracket and my big paws in here to even attempt to do this. <clears throat> the only way that I think I, and again, this is just my opinion, but the only way that I can see that you can do this on a four door, uh, honestly, you, you're either going to have to be cutting a whole lot of wood or you're going to have to raise the body to, to get in there. I'm not really too sure. Kind of wish um, I had the old body or a, a section of it to just kind of lay up here and and really confirm my suspicions. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. Again, you can see just 
how high um, I would say probably a good inch and a half two inches from the top of the frame right here and that's pretty significant uh, you're not just chipping away at a little bit of wood um, that all comes right in through here so anywho uh, I am still very happy that uh, that I have them very excited to go ahead and put them on and again I really do apologize for my voice um, just uh, have been dealing with a really nasty bug but still wanted to get a video out while I'm back here I noticed that the rear spring shackles need to be replaced and so uh, it's gonna be a lot easier to tackle this bad boy with uh, a body off of it and so that's uh, kind of an unexpected project but then when you're doing a project car you should expect the unexpected now this is already together just so that you can kind of get an idea um, another thing that I would point out kind of a little tech tip whatever side you decide to take apart and in this particular case it was this side if you really want to make life easy make sure that if you're taking the the you know the side that you take apart um, first make sure that you have this facing up and so that's just going to make it a little bit easier to slide the drum on uh, <clears throat> I uh, uh, I actually had this side up first and so when I put this all back together um, obviously over here it's facing downward all I did was put it in gear rotate this until that is facing upward and that's going to make it a whole heck of a lot easier to slide that drum on and uh, keep the key from falling out or falling off and getting it all torqued up really nice here's another thing I want to point out and that is should you pop that bearing out and repack it well I would say I'd leave it alone from what I have read if your car lubricates properly um, you shouldn't have to repack this bearing I think it's more than lubricating properly it's uh, when I go ahead and grease the car like I should there's a grease fitting at the bottom of the axle which is going to help lubricate that bearing so why take a chance and you know damage the seal or anything else <clears throat> and popping that bearing out when it's unnecessary now what I did do is I just kind of you know rotated the bearing made sure that I didn't feel anything that was um, alarming and I didn't in either drum but again just another another tip you do not have to take that whole assembly out and pack the bearings again if you're greasing your car properly like you should uh, that grease fitting should be getting grease in there during your normal greasing intervals friends that's going to wrap things up now i apologize for my voice i'm actually getting either getting a cold or you get, getting past one i'm not really too sure to be honest with you woke up this morning throat was a little scratchy and within three or four hours uh it got really pretty bad had some uh chicken broth not that that's got anything to do with this video but it does affect my voice so i apologize if things do uh, sound a little bit raspy -er than normal if there is such a thing anyhow hope that was helpful to you especially with the ken davis shocks hey remember to give us a like and subscribe be sure to follow us with the huckster build because things are progressing really well next up we'll be showing you the cowl and what we've done to get that back together so Give us a like, a subscribe, but more than anything else, y'all be blessed.